Laker fans, welcome into today's show. Now, today I'm breaking down all the latest news and rumors going on with the Los Angeles Lakers. And the first one is that the NBA is coming back, which means we could be going straight to the NBA playoffs. Now, the NBA is obviously exploring a plan to get the NBA back to July, to uh, play, return to play, excuse me, in July in Orlando, Florida. No word officially on how that's going to happen. We should get some news here in the coming days. But one thing they're considering is going straight to the playoffs. And they're either going to do that by going straight to Western Conference versus Eastern Conference, traditional one through eight matchups, or they're going to reseed the playoffs completely and go one through 16. And if that happens, the Lakers would be going up against the Brooklyn Nets in the Eastern Conference. So we'll talk about that here in a minute. But first, let's look at what those Western Conference standings look, at, look like as of today. Number one, it's your Los Angeles Lakers. At nearly 50 wins, they're kind of far and away. I don't think anyone's going to touch them. I don't think the Clippers are going to catch that number one spot, even if they do decide to finish the regular season. But they are followed closely by LA, this number two LA. And then number three at Denver is Denver at 43 and 22. Coming in at four, Utah Jazz at 41 and 23. And then five through eight, this is where you're going to find the Lakers' next matchup. At five, you get the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are definitely overachieving. Houston Rockets, Dallas Mavericks, and then the Memphis Grizzlies, the team the Lakers would be facing if they go up against their Western Conference Western Conference opponents. Now, whenever they do return to the playoffs, you're going to need to rock all the Lakers gear you own, and you can own some brand new Lakers gear for cheap with our friends over at Fanatics. YouTube.com, excuse me, chatsports.com slash Lakers T is going to get you 25% off this Lakers t-shirt, just 26 bucks. Now, Look, they're going to the playoffs. They're going to make the playoffs. They're going to be the number one seed. You're going to want to rep all the stuff you have of them. So go get yourself a new t-shirt for cheap. Just 26 bucks at chatsports.com slash Lakers T. Now the Memphis Grizzlies, the team they could be facing off against if they go east-west like tradition. Go. They got a pretty good starting five, I'll say it. Ja Morant and Dylan Brooks is your backcourt. I like Ja a lot. And I think Dylan Brooks is really coming into his own as well. They just traded for Justice Winslow. He hasn't really gotten acclimated to that system yet, and he might not even be starting right away, but I expect him to be in there, and he's a good young forward. Jaron Jackson Jr. and Jonas Valanciunas in the middle. But really, the most impressive thing about this Memphis Grizzlies team, not just how young they are and how fast they've already moved into a playoff spot in the Western Conference, it's not just how exciting they are, but the best thing that Memphis has going for them is their young duo of Jaron Jackson Jr. and Ja Morant. I like these two guys a lot, and I think they've got a lot to prove, a lot to really build on in Memphis. Because let's face it, Ja Morant's probably the rookie of the year. He's played the most minutes, played more than Zion Williamson. He should win the rookie of the year. And then Jaron Jackson Jr., a guy that I doubted coming out of Michigan State, has been absolutely terrific. Ja averaging 17.6 points per game and nearly seven assists, while Jaron Jackson's putting up also 17 points per game and five boards now jaron jackson jr shooting the three ball a little bit more efficiently than Ja at 39.7 but he's not taking as many as morant who's shooting 36.7 from beyond the three mark but let's say they go one through 16 they reseed it and the east plays the west in the first round and everything's all jumbled up and crazy they're going against the brooklyn nets a team that i think la would rather see i think that's a clean sweep i think memphis is probably a clean sweep too let's face it but brooklyn a lot easier of an opponent than the Memphis Grizzlies. And that's who they would end up facing. Now, the problem with the Nets is that they've really just had an injury-ridden season. Really, they've been hurt a lot. Their star player, Kevin Durant, hasn't played a minute yet. Kyrie Irving's been in and out of the lineup. And then you got guys like Spencer Dinwiddie stepping up big for them, which has been great. DeAndre Jordan and Jared Allen in the middle is fun. But here's the thing. Kevin Durant's not coming back. He's not going to play no matter what the NBA decides to do. He's already said that. And Kyrie Irving is already questionable as well. So if they go up against them, they've got a fun starting five with Kyrie and Joe Harris in the backcourt. Karis LeVert and Torian Prince are kind of your three and your four with Jared Allen in the middle. DeAndre Jordan starts some nights, but I think they should really just focus on Allen. Now, one guy they could be missing, he might not even be playing if the NBA returns. The Nets haven't said, yeah, he'll be back. He might still be dealing with with all of his injuries is Kyrie Irving, former teammate of LeBron James. This year, when healthy, putting up 27.4 points per game, five boards, six assists, shooting nearly 40% from three. He's a great player, but he's been hurt all year long. You can't count on him when the playoffs roll around this year because he might not even be there, which would be good for the Lakers because then they don't have to go up against him. But even if he comes back, I don't think they're going to have any problem with the Brooklyn Nets. In fact, 
I don't think they're going to have any problem with either team, but choose one team you would rather see the Lakers play in the first round. Type BKN for the Brooklyn Nets. Type MEM for the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm going to say the Brooklyn Nets because you want as easy of a first round as you can get because we know the Lakers are in for a long playoff run. So you want an easy first round. I'm going to say the Brooklyn Nets. If you want the more exciting matchup, sure, the Memphis Grizzlies. But give me the easy one with the Nets because let's face it, they're trying to make it to the NBA Finals. And I've got them as my favorite to win the NBA Finals. I think if the NBA comes back, they play the playoffs out, I think the Lakers are going to win it all. So I'm going to hit the like video on this button, and I want you to do the same if you truly believe the Lakers are going to win the NBA title this season. Go ahead and smash that thumbs up if you think so. And if you don't think so, let us know why in the comment section below. Now, the latest mock draft, which let's face it, the Lakers don't care that much about the draft this year, but... If Bleach Report's got Kira Lewis Jr. falling to them all the way to number 29. I've got Kira Lewis going in probably the top 20 of the first round. So I think this would be a steal of a first pick in the first round for the Los Angeles Lakers. He is one of the fastest players in the draft this year, and he really benefited a lot from staying an extra year at Alabama. Now, if you watch my video of point guards the Lakers should target, I had Kira Lewis as a guy they should reach for. Didn't think he'd fall all that way, but Bleacher Report thinks so. This year at Alabama, he averaged 18 and a half points per game, five boards and five assists, and shot nearly 36% from three. Now, he's not a great shooter, but his shot mechanics are so mechanically sound that I think it's going to translate well to the NBA. And like I said, this kid's fast, lightning fast. He grew a lot from freshman to sophomore year, put up 13 points per game, two boards, two assists in his freshman year, and then really ups all of those numbers to 19 points, five boards, five assists. Three-point percentage took a little bit of a jump, nothing super dramatic. The field goal percentage also went up about 2% because the thing is, he said, hey, I know I'm fast. I know I'm long. I know I can get to the rim and finish. So he did that more efficiently. And why it makes sense for the Lakers to go with Kira Lewis in the draft is because their guard situation is a little bit up in the air. Avery Bradley's got a player option for about $5 million. Now, do I think he'll opt in? Yeah, I do. But would I rather have Kira Lewis Jr. as a future prospect? Absolutely. Alex Caruso, we all know and love him. He's trying to get some love from Rihanna right now. One year, $2.8 million left on his contract. Rajon Rondo also got a player option like Avery Bradley, but his is only $2 million. And then you got Quinn Cook, who really just hasn't done that much for the Los Angeles Lakers. We would rather have Kira Lewis on this team as a prospect, as a guy the Lakers can groom and eventually turn in to a starting caliber point guard. That's what I think Kira Lewis projects as. So getting him at 29, getting a starting caliber player at the 29 pick in the first round is an absolute steal. But who do you want the Lakers to draft with that 29th overall pick? Maybe it's Kira Lewis Jr. Maybe you want a big man. Maybe you want an overseas prospect. Whoever it may be, let me know down in the comment section below because there's a lot of good talent. I know people say this is a weak draft. And at the top, yeah, it's a weak draft. But when you get into that later first round, it gets pretty deep. So let me know who you guys want to see as a rookie next season. I really like Kira Lewis Jr. a lot. I think he's going to make a lot of sense if he is the pick at number 29. Now, Laker fans, whoever they end up picking, you're going to want to make sure you are subscribed here on the channel. So go hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash Lakers TV. Let's talk about one more rumor today. It's Danny Green. Danny Green says LeBron James is already taking the Lakers to Kobe Bryant's level. I say pump the freaking brakes. Not quite yet. Now, we know LeBron, the king, has led the Lakers to the best record in the West. Nearly 50 wins. Probably would have gotten there if the season hadn't been cut short. But here's what Danny Green, LeBron James's teammate, had to say about it. He said, I think LeBron is just smarter. Not smarter than Kobe. He was saying just smarter than he was before. I think LeBron is just smarter. He knows how to win. And now he's bringing this organization back to the level it was when Kobe was around. Yeah, they're getting closer to what Kobe was when he was around. But... I would never compare the King in his first really full year in LA to Kobe Bryant. He's not there yet. Kobe Bryant did some amazing things on this Lakers team. He changed the organization. He is the face of the franchise for as long as everyone will live. They will think Los Angeles Lakers, Kobe Bryant. Now, Kobe didn't do it on his own. It wasn't all by himself. Of course, he did have Shaq and LeBron has Anthony Davis and they're hoping to bring the same level of respect and win and championship pedigree to this team that Kobe and Shaq did. And statistically, they're getting pretty close. 52 points per game for Le 52 points per game 
for LeBron and AD. Kobe and Shaq were at 57. Kobe and Shaq got the edge in rebounds. Now assists, LeBron and AD are better, but that's because LeBron's putting up 10 assists per game. Blocking about the same amount of shots, and the efficiency is really about the same as well at 51 and 49%. Now, the difference is Kobe and Shaq have got rings. Kobe especially has got rings. He's got five on his fingers from his time with the Los Angeles Lakers. In 2000, he dominates the Indiana Pacers, goes four and two. Philadelphia 76ers in 2001 takes down Allen Iverson. They go four and one. In 2002, they go up against the New Jersey Nets, a team led by Jason Kidd and Kenyon Martin. Not a strong team, so Kobe said, hey, we'll just sweep them. And that's what Kobe and Shaq did from 2000 to 2002. But then Shaq leaves. We all know the story. And Kobe says, I'm still going to take this team to the next level. 2009, he beats the Orlando Magic 4-1 and one in that series. And then 2010, probably one of my favorite final series ever. He goes up against the Boston Celtics, beat up, beats him in seven, goes 4-3. and three. So do I love the King? Yes. Am I a huge LeBron fan? Yes. Do I think he's one of the two greatest players of all time? Absolutely. Is he on Kobe's level when it comes to being a Laker? No, not even close. Give him a ring on his finger. How about give him five rings on his finger, and then we can talk about Kobe Bryant. But who is your favorite Laker of all time? Let me know in the comment section below. I think we all should know the answer here, but maybe you guys got a few other answers. Let me know down below who it is. And Lakers fans, I'll talk to you next time.